Am I live? Okay, I'm live. Here we are, guys. So, question is, why, <clears throat> why do people still buy CDs in 2018? <clears throat> so I'm sitting here in my storage unit going through a bunch of CDs, and this is a question that is probably to some people a complete mystery if you only listen to music through a paid streaming service or if you download digital files. But you might be surprised to know that in 2017, over a billion dollars of new CDs were sold in the United States, a billion. Now between 2016 and 2017, CD sales, physical sales went down about, um, I think it was 4%, which is pretty small. And vinyl actually went up, I believe, 10% between 2016 and 2017. Um, so CDs, new CDs are being sold like crazy. And um, speaking of myself as a reseller uh, that sells books and CDs, lots of CDs, they're all used. Uh, I don't send any, any new ones. I might send in very good or like new occasionally, but they're all used. And... Uh, I know that people are buying tons of used CDs. So some of the reasons um, that this could be, and I'm gonna talk about some more stats or whatever, but uh, some of the reasons people buy CDs is, is they like, so there's been a resurgence in the last year of vinyl, right? Sort of this nostalgia of ba from baby boomers and then a lot of millennials have caught on to this and are buying a lot of vinyl records. It's become kind of a cool thing to do. And one of the big reasons is, is it's a physical product. So people are kind of, I don't know if they're rebelling against digital downloads or digital music or streaming, but they are, uh, a lot of people want to have a physical item. They want to have a CD in their possession that they can uh, pull out the disc, put it in the CD player and, and play it. And then they have the artwork, they have the liner notes, um, all the stuff to look at, which is I think a big part of why people like the, um, the vinyl records. So a physical product is one thing. Um, CDs, the great thing about it is is because they're small and, and they can play them in, uh, so they're small, so they're easy to carry around, but also you can play them in your car, you can play them at home. Uh, and you can also download the music to your iPod, to your phone, to your computer. And um, if you want to go, go for a run, go to the gym, uh, go take a walk, you can have your iPod, have your phone, and download it to it and um, listen to the, to the CD people are not really carrying around disc mans anymore um, what do you call it uh, they're cheaper in the sense of cheaper than if you want a physical product cheaper than vinyl so um, vinyls become really popular these days not selling I think it sold let's see vinyl so in 2016 vinyl sold 355 million dollars worth and then it jumped up to 388 million uh, in 2017, so vinyl's continuing to grow, while CD goes, the CD sales go down a little bit, new CD sales, but um, uh, I think that vinyl has impacted CD sales, whereas uh, if somebody is, goes to a live show, or even is in a record store and sees that the vinyl prices, new vinyl prices are pretty high, um, they can a lot of times be over $20, uh, where you can buy a new CD, depends, but definitely under 20 bucks and get a new CD for anywhere between like 10 or $18, depending uh, from my experience in a, in a record store or, or, or online. But, um, uh, but I think that's affected it as well. Uh, let's see, whoops. Those are kind of the reasons that I came up with or that I, uh, I think are, are the um, kind of the drivers of why people are still buying CDs. So uh, a bit cheaper than vinyl, physical product, play in your car and download it, uh, take it on the go. Uh, let's see. So in 2000, interesting, interesting stat uh, is in 2017, C, com, CD and vinyl sales combined, so new of course. This is according to the uh, RIAA, which is the Recording Industry Association of America that tracks this stuff. 2017, um, CD and vinyl sales were larger than digital downloads, uh, which 
is is partly or largely due to the the, the uh, vinyl sales that have keep seemingly uh, keep on growing, and um, that has really impacted that percentage. So it was close. I think it was like 15 to 17 percent of overall new music sales in the U.S. So uh, vinyl and and or physical sales, physical products were a couple percentage points higher. And it, it seems like vinyl is going to continue to grow. So uh, it seems like people are either going with the streaming or they want the physical products uh, more than they want a, a digital download. But of course, you know, digital download still sells a lot. But it's just interesting to see that, that in 2018 with with all the streaming services and um, Amazon and iTunes and everything uh, out there where you can buy digital music, that people are still buying physical uh, CDs and and vinyl. Uh, it came out in February of this year. I remember seeing this article that Best Buy, in that article it said July 1st they're going to stop, by July 1st they were going to stop selling CDs in their stores. I don't know if they've done that yet, made that complete transition. I haven't been into Best Buy in a little bit, but uh, it said that they were going to stop and let's see. Uh, that they were going to stop and then Target was also considering doing that as well and or doing a sort of um, on-demand CD sales. Uh, so I don't know if you've been in a Best Buy lately, uh, if they still have CDs or not, but uh, according to the article they were going to phase those out. And I don't think that'll, I mean that'll probably affect overall new CD sales, but um, for our purposes, for resellers, uh, you know, still used sales are going to be big. Um, Let's see. There was an interesting article uh, on fastcompany.com on their website. The title of the article was "The CD Business Isn't Dying; It's Just Evolving," and that was that was pretty. Uh, it was pretty fascinating because it was talking about indie music, so um, you know, lesser-known bands and groups who who do a lot of live performances and don't have the big labels behind them, don't have the huge exposure, uh, but they still have, you know, their group of loyal fans. And so a lot of them are selling uh, CDs and vinyl. And this one, they used this example of this one group who brought vinyl, uh, a new vinyl, or I should say um, their newest album in vinyl, but they didn't bring it in CD, but they had some older CDs and they sold out all the CDs. And so uh, pretty quickly, so they realized that next time they were going to have CDs because people that go, you know, they're loyal fans that are actually going to their, their shows and meeting them afterwards and want to go home with a CD or a T-shirt or whatever, a record, uh, they want to buy something. So apparently uh, that's become really big with, with indie music where they are still selling a lot of physical products. But um, regardless of how the new sales go, uh, new CD sales go, uh, not regardless, but uh, I still feel that even if CD sales continue to decline a little bit or even dramatically over the next couple years, that uh, it's still great for reselling for used sales because you know I'm selling hundreds of used CDs a month on Amazon, and um, as I find them and, and whether in bulk or out in the, out in the, the wild, I'll still send, I'll continue to send them in because people are still buying them. And uh, it's still a great business for resellers. Um, the new sales don't really, I mean, we're not, for the most part, I, I believe most of the people that are gonna watch this that are uh, resellers are gonna be selling used CDs. You might, you may list it as very good or like new, but you're, because of Amazon's strict uh, policies and potentially getting in trouble for trying to sell something new, which was an issue last year, uh, I recommend you only sell used, but you know, people are, are, are still wanting the physical products. I think the baby boomers have a lot to do with it as a lot of them retire uh, over the past five or so years have started to retire. A lot of them want, uh, they're a big part of the vinyl resurgence, but you know, they want um, a, a physical product, whether it's vinyl or whether it's CD. I'm, I send in a lot of these like classic rock, um, older CDs from, from anywhere, you know, 60s, 70s or big. Uh, 
those eras, those decades, I, I sell a lot of those CDs and a lot of those in, um, not necessarily the newer ones. So uh, that's kind of, you know, been a big part as boomers as well. But I think uh, the CD business, reselling business is not going anywhere because when you think about VHS tapes and uh, in Japan, the last manufacturer of new um, VCRs stopped manufacturing them, I believe, last year. And so there's no new, yeah, uh, there's no new VCRs available, but there's, you know, thousands and thousands, I mean, like hundreds of thousands of them just floating around in the world. And the, due to the fact that there's so much um, content on VHS that was never put on DVDs or isn't streamable, uh, there's just thousands of titles, literally, of VHS titles that, or programming that is only on VHS so someone's gonna have to buy those if they want them and uh, also people a lot of people just like the old-school feel of it and uh, of seeing um, or using VHS tapes uh, and that sort of thing so kind of look at how CDs are and um, who is it here Oops. J Jason just mentioned that um, people want vinyl and CDs over digital downloads as the sound isn't compressed and has a richer sound whoops that's another. Um, oops, uh, that's another reason for sure, Jason. That's something that they mentioned in in the article, that um, that you can't beat uh, the quality, the sound quality on the CD. That uh, a lot of people want that for the quality as well. In addition to just having the physical product, people like to collect. You know, I know I have a, a not a massive but a decent size uh, music collection on CD, and I prefer. Uh, to have it on CD versus just downloading a song, but sometimes I want a song and, and I don't want to spend, like there was a song that I found, that I uh, a new song that I found, it was an old song, but new to me from several decades ago, and, and I, I uh, looked it up online to buy the CD, and it's going for like, it's it's so rare that it's going for like 200 bucks, and instead I can just, um, instead of buying the whole album, I can buy the, CD, or the song for 99 cents, so I can at least have the song. And you never know, all the CDs I come across, maybe I'll come across it one day, but it's pretty rare, so it's unlikely. So yeah, definitely for the sound quality and uh, physical product. So so yeah, that, that was kind of the point of the video. Uh, as I make these videos, live videos, I'm gonna spend the, be the bulk of the beginning of the time um, talking about the topic. And then if you have any questions or comments, definitely let me know. Um, so I'm in my storage unit. As you can see, I'll show you. So right now, I'm just kind of uh, these are these are CDs that um, cases that were empty. So I'm going to go through them and see if there's any that are worth saving. But what I've been doing here is uh, putting together lots. I was telling you guys yesterday. You can see that that's based on uh, artist, and these are genres. These here. This madness over here is uh, ones I still have to go through. And then I have more over here. And then these were ones that, um, that are all CDs as well. But those aren't ones that I've gone, but those are ones that I already went through for uh, individually for, for eBay. Basically, to make a long story short, I have a lot of CDs to go through. And then I have two Gaylords left. That's an empty one. But those two are stuffed with DVDs, and those are gonna go up on eBay once I uh, once I get through all the CDs. Most of those CDs are gonna end up going in lots. Um, so so once I you know once I go through them, and basically to make the process faster, I'm not gonna look up every single one on eBay to see if it's worth selling individually uh, based upon the experience I've had and exposure to ton thousands of CDs I have a pretty good idea a pretty good eye for which ones are worth looking up that I've never seen before or look unique or interesting based on artwork or the name of the, the band or whatever it may be group um, so it shouldn't take uh, it'll take a little bit of time but it won't take so long because I can uh, 
put the ones to the side that I've seen before that I know I can just put into a lot based upon the artist or the genre. And, um, and I can get through them a little quicker or a lot quicker that way. One thing, one thing that I'm, well, I'm always, eBay is always kind of <laughs> pleasantly surprising me with what sells. If you got, let me ask a question and feel free to comment. There's only six of it. Well, only, I'm glad all six of you are here, but there's not a ton of us here. But um, if you came across, you know, if you bought a bunch of CDs, it doesn't have to be a gay lord. Let's say you bought, you know, three or 400 from somebody locally, brought them home. You're gonna sell some on Amazon and then the rest eBay kind of a thing. Um, if you saw like, you know, some Britney Spears were in there, would you would you just assume that they weren't weren't worth any money? Uh, individually, might not be worth money on on Amazon or eBay, but would you consider putting them into a, a lot? Because I see I see a lot of those type of popular artists like Britney Spears, like Madonna, like Enya, and. Uh, I was surprised that I, I put together a lot of, it was either five or six Britney Spears CDs, all different. And um, I didn't sell it for a ton of money, but I sold it, uh, I put it as an auction and it sold for $7.50, $7.50 for, I think it was, it was either five or six. Um, then they pay for shipping. So again, it's not individually a bunch of money, but it's, uh, uh, it adds up. So. That's why I've started to put aside the po more popular artists who are, you know, have a big following and people on eBay tend to like, whether it's CDs or whether it's books uh, or vinyl, tend to like, if you're gonna do it by, by author, let's say in books or by um, uh, artist, singer, performer, then uh, the more you have and a lot, the better. So, you know, if I'm able to get together like 15 Madonna CDs that's, I assume, I haven't done it yet, but I assume it's going to do pretty well. Like I had, you know, Britney Spears, uh, it wasn't all of her albums, but it was, she doesn't have that many, I don't think. So it was most of them. And, um, you know, it had some bidding. It was funny. It had 14 watchers at the end, but no bids. And then it suddenly got some bids. I, I was, it was so bizarre because I was like, well, is that going to, is it going to go for a bunch of money? And it didn't go for a bunch, but it went for uh, more than I, I thought it would. Let's see. Whoops. Uh, Jason asks, are you fully ungated in CDs now? Uh, fully, yeah. Yes, I've always been fully ungated. I can sell all of them. Uh, I didn't have the problem that a lot of people had, thankfully, where they got gated on, on the popular titles or whatever it may be, so I can sell whatever, um, any of them. And then, let's see, whoops. Uh, Zena asked me, what is your, what is your storage unit? Do you mean, are you asking me how big is it? Let me know. If you are, I think it's um, 29 feet long by, I think it's like 12 feet wide, something like that. And it's like 380 a month. The first, oh, the, the first storage unit I got was much smaller. I could only fit, I think four Gaylords in there. And then I had a little space in the corner with a table that I could sort. Um, but then when I got into, uh, well, I started ordering too many Gaylords basically, but I needed more space. I moved into this bigger one and it's pretty good size. Um, I mean, honestly, I could fit like 10 Gaylords in here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I could probably fit like 12, but I, I, not with, I wouldn't have much space left. Um, Zena asked, aren't you afraid of CDs melting in your storage unit? Um, the actual CDs, the discs? Well, I mean, they're in the cases, so they're, they're not going to melt. Um, and also, it doesn't uh, it doesn't get that hot inside the storage unit, believe it or not, because my storage unit is on the... Um, there's another level above it, so that takes all the sun, the beating of the sun. 
so it doesn't actually surprisingly when I come in here in the morning like when I came in open the open the door um, the inside of the <laughs> the storage unit is cooler than outside because it's not have dealing with the direct heat if it was if it was on the other the top floor or if there was no second floor it was just this one then yeah it would probably be scorching hot in here so if you're gonna get a storage unit I recommend that it does not that it's um, does not have the direct sunlight on it because that's probably going to make a big difference. Uh, but I don't think... No, I don't have... Um, no, I mean the case is... It's not direct sunlight and it doesn't get... Like I said, it doesn't get that hot in here. Even, even here in Southern California where uh, this past weekend it was 115 degrees or more. Because I'm in Southern California, but I'm not, I'm not in like LA, I'm further east. So I'm more like, not like in the desert, but further away from the ocean. 40 miles or so from the ocean. So it gets hotter out here. And it was, we had a heat wave this past week that was ridiculous. Oh, the heist. I just love, you know, I find these, like the heist one is a good one. Um, by Macklemore. But there's no... CD. I always feel weird, like, I have everything but the CD. It just feels like a waste. Like, I wish, I don't know. There's got to be some... I know that maybe I could, like, parcel them out and sell the artwork or something, but I have so many, so much other stuff to sell um, that I'm not going to do it. But I feel like a, a waste throwing that away. Here's Neil Young. Okay. So yeah, so I don't know where I was. So yeah, just uh, this is my. I, yesterday I sent out the three, um, the three hundred. Uh, my latest FBA shipment of three hundred CDs. My latest shipment that happened to be three hundred CDs uh, to FedEx down the street or near where I live. So that went out yesterday. Uh, so I don't have any, I don't have anything uh, to list on FBA or on Amazon right now. Well, I have a couple for Merchant Fulfilled, but I don't have any for FBA. Um, so I'm going to have to do some, some sourcing to start building up another shipment, which I'm going to do next week because this week, uh, I'm focus or the, today and tomorrow I'm focusing on getting through as, as many CDs as I can to get up some lots uh, on eBay. Ba -ba -ba. So Jason says, have, I don't know, okay, how do I do this? Have climate controlled storage here in, um, Jason, what's DFW? Is that the, where you live, I guess? Still too hot to work in. Yeah, this isn't climate controlled, but although I think it's climate controlled upstairs because they have the, because I'm in the, um, uh, what do you call it? I'm in a bigger unit, so the ones upstairs are the smaller indoor type of units, and up there, uh, I'm pretty sure they have some type of air conditioning going, because I can, there's a machine right here, there's an air conditioner. Uh, let's see. Okay, Zena says, I was one that got stuck with being gated after ungated and need a place to put them. Oh, so Zena, they told you you couldn't sell certain popular titles, which I still don't understand which those were. Uh, how many units do you have listed and how many are you selling monthly? So I believe I have around a thousand in um, the warehouses and I just sent in another 300. So I'll have, um, you know, in the next week or so close to 1300. Uh, and then I have a couple hundred on Merchant Fulfilled, but uh, Merchant Fulfilled doesn't sell that many. I just repriced and I sold a $20 book, but Merchant Fulfilled kind of sucks for me. But um, uh, yeah, so that's how many I have. I mean, I at my peak in my FBA career, which is now going on almost four years, I had almost 3,000 items at one point, but that was before the fee increases and the, and the long-term storage fee changes and all that stuff. Uh, okay, Dallas-Fort Worth, got it. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so I had to get rid of a lot of that that was just slow moving and I had sent in the wrong stuff. So now I'm really, really like crazy strict about what I send in. So I just, I want stuff, I just really all about turn, you know, like turning my, uh, having fast sales and uh, getting my money back as soon as I can and buying more stuff and sending it in. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to like undercut people uh, or anything like that. I'm just, you know, I matching uh, other FBA sellers. But I feel like I should do a video about calling out some of these other FBA sellers who just either they don't care or they don't get the idea of of condition where if yours is very good and yours is good and yours is acceptable, they should be priced a little lower versus the other way around. But anyway. Uh, da -da, fella. Oh, and how many are you selling monthly? So last month I sold 300. There were some books in there too, but I sold 300. So my, my sell through rate is pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, because I, the month before in, let's see, in May, I only sold like 160 or something. And I, then I, that's when I started sending in all these shipments that I had backed up here in my unit. So I built my um, my sales back up and and all that. That's has been a good thing. Okay. Um, my distributor doesn't even carry CDs anymore. He stopped buying DVDs too. When you mean you mean the person who you buy from uh, to resell on Amazon? Vinyl still sells though. Vinyl's great. I would honestly be doing vinyl if I wasn't so backed up. I do have a little bit of vinyl to sell on eBay. Uh, I don't know if I have any for Amazon. I might, but they're just a little more time consuming. And I want to get through all these CDs and the DVDs, which can sell quicker. Um, same here. I had, oh, okay. He says, I had about 4,500 listed in Cleaned House and being particular of what I send in. Uh... Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to... The chat keeps disappearing. I'm using the, the YouTube streaming app, and it's the first time, so I'm still figuring it out. Uh, so he said that he had, yeah, 4,500 listed in Clean House. So how many do you have now? Or how many do you kind of average, like, half that or something? Because now with the... Uh, it's a combination of the of the... Well, the long-term storage fees that are looming next month. Oh, 1300 yep. Uh, and, uh, and the inbound storage, I mean, the, the split shipments. The split shipments have been brutal. I mean, I spent $61 this time for 300 items. Uh, but it was, I broke it down. Yeah, the mat, I think it was 20 cents an item, which is which is better because my previous shipment I, it was close it was a little over 30 cents an item, which is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. But Amazon, I mean <laughs> it's not enough that um, that they charge higher monthly FBA fees and the long-term storage fees now starting in in, eight, in August every month. Uh, but they, they just insist on splitting, um, sorry, on splitting, uh, splitting the shipments like crazy, but that's life. Like I said in my video yesterday, I'm not complaining. I just accept it and move on. Sell on Amazon or don't and accept their ridiculousness. So for now I'm accepting the ridiculousness and just sending in what I know or I'm pretty darn positive should sell. Yeah, uh, you sell 1300 in there, about 2500 or pff, 25, 250 to 300 per month. Yeah, I think if you, let's see, I did, I did uh, 300 sales last month and I had, I think at most I had over a thousand, a little over a thousand in there. So yeah, that was like 30%. I mean, 
if I'm if I I think right now if I'm a 25% or higher monthly sell through rate that's I'm happy and if it's more than that if it's 30% or more then that's great uh, I'm just you know I'm trying to make a profit and uh, I don't want them sitting there for very long so you ask how big is the storage unit it's I believe it's it's 29 feet long I know that and I believe it's 11 or 12 feet across yeah, that sounds about right. I think it's 11 or 12. So I've fit as many as, I could fit like probably 12 Gaylords in here if I if I wanted to or needed to, but um, I need, to, you know, I try to have some space for, uh, for um, sorting and being able to move around. Like I had three Gaylords of CDs that I had bought from a different person that I found on Craigslist and they turned out to just not be worth the time and effort so I ended up donating them and I'll have a nice write-off come next year. Uh, I just wanted to clear out the space and um, made a connection. I mean, you know, a small connection, but I made a connection with the local thrift store with the woman who deals with that. And um, I found out about their, different topic, but I found out about their, um, how they, they get books from somebody, I don't know, in Gaylords, like one or two a month. And then they go through those and the ones they don't want, they send it back. And, you know, I was just asking her what kind of, like, just harmlessly, you know, asking her, well, what kind of books sell for you? And she's like, oh, well, kids' books sell, the teachers and parents. We sell cookbooks. We sell religious stuff. And I was, like, checking it off in my mind, like, oh, those are ones that maybe I could get, I could get to her and she could maybe give me another Gaylord. I don't know. It may or may not be something that I'll do, but just trying to make those connections and uh, with people locally. Let's see. Oh, sorry. So you asked me how big is it? So 29 by like 11 or 12 and I'm paying, I think it's like 384 a month. It went up like 10 or 12 bucks recently, but it's not bad. Uh, are you just doing books and CDs? You're moving into private label this month. Yeah, I'm just doing, uh, for Amazon, I'm doing, uh, I have mostly CDs in there now. I send in, I just send in like 12 or 15 books in this last shipment. Um, I send in the occasional uh, video game, high price video game, or one that moves fast. Uh, I send in one that's that's for like there was a, a PlayStation One game. I think it was like Castlevania or something like that. I, I didn't wasn't familiar with it, but apparently it sells for a lot of money. It's I think I have it listed for around fifty bucks or so, um, and sells pretty consistently. But yeah, books and CDs. Um, I'm not familiar with private label. I mean. I'm familiar with the idea, but everything that I hear about is people spend months and months researching and then finding a product and then they have to spend a good chunk of money to get it up and running. Is that right? Uh, I mean, my assumption is the benefit or one of the benefits is that it's um, if you can find one that sells, that you just keep replenishing it and you don't have to keep looking for products like looking for new books looking for new cds etc you just keep selling 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 for as long as it sells is that is that the idea uh jason i have a lot of those graphic audiobook westerns i got dirt cheap last year off mm -hmm. marketplace um slow but steady sellers will probably let them absorb long-term whoops stored dang it Long-term storage fees. Come on. Graphic mm -hmm. audiobook westerns. Oh, okay. So are those selling, what would you say, like over 20 bucks? Or are they like way more than that? Like $50 or more than that? Uh. Uh, Adriel Montoya asks, are you unrate or ungated in popular music, what kind of process, uh, what kind of process do you have for cleaning CDs? Okay, so yes, I'm ungated. Um, I'm ungated in popular music or just CDs and music in general. I never, I was already grandfathered in when they closed it back in 2016. And then in, what was it, 2017, when they suddenly just started gating people who were already ungated. 
uh, I didn't have to go through that, fortunately. So I can sell any CD I want. If, I mean, I don't believe I found any that I can't sell. Um, so that's been really good. And then what is my process for cleaning them? I have a, uh, I have a resurfacer at home. Uh, of course, I'm blanking on the name. Anyway, it's it's uh, it's one of those popular re uh, resurfacers. It's it costs a grand, it costs me a grand to buy it, but you know I can write it off. Um, and it resurfaces a CD in 30 seconds, depending on how bad it is. If it's minor, it'll resurface it pretty quick. Eco Pro, yes, the Eco Pro, it'll resurface it um, in 30 seconds, and you're good to go. Um, if uh, what do you call it? If it's a little worse, then you might have to do it twice or so. And then if it's got a, if, so basically it's for minor like scuffs, um, minor scratches. If it's a deep scratch, it's, it's, um, depends on how deep it is and how bad it is, but I haven't had good luck with ones that are super scratched up. If it's pretty bad, if it's pretty scuffed up, um, and I do it a couple times, and it's I can still see, um, you know, uh, scratches or wear or scuffs or whatever, I'll I'll usually just test it. I mean, this is a CD that I'm gonna, you know, sell on Amazon. Just test it real quick, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Usually they work, but you know, it's hit or miss, which always sucks when I scan a CD and then. It's it's good for Amazon, and I look at the I look at the CD, uh, the surface of the CD, and it's all messed up. And I'm just like, well, I'll give it a shot. I'll resurface it and see what happens. There's other ones that are uh, Eco Pros that they have that are more expensive that do that deal with the deeper scratches, but those cost a lot more money. Uh, it depends. Initially, you will incur some marketing costs, but our product is made in the U.S. and my minimum orders are very low. Do you recommend private label? I mean, what do you think uh, the marketing costs or the overall costs are in general? You, you mean like hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars? And I guess, you know, your answer is partly depends, right, on what you're selling. But... Um, I mean, I've heard about private label and people, some people say, oh, I would never do it or it's a waste of money. And others say, oh, well, you just have to spend the time and find a good one. And there's all these courses about how to do it. And I don't know, it just seems like it's the new, it's the thing to do, <laughs> but you have to do it the right way or be careful you don't waste a bunch of money. I don't know. Alice in Chains, but no disc. <laughs> Da, da, da. Eco Pro, you got two. Uh. Long haul truckers are good customers with those audiobooks. Yeah. Yeah, deep scratches will not be fixed. I noticed it does a better job with CDs. You can see more of the spirals on DVDs. Yeah. I haven't sold DVDs in a while. I haven't resurfaced a DVD in a bit, but um, but yeah, that's probably true. I mean. Yeah, that's the that's so the great thing about CDs, uh, reselling them is that they're small. They don't weigh as much. If you if you're ungated it in CDs, you can send them in. Um, they take up less space, less weight, but then they're more fragile. They could the case could crack during transit. <laughs> it could crack at the warehouse because someone drops it. You know, bangs it against something, doesn't treat it right. Um, It's, it happens it happens all the time the thing that, that's the great thing about books is unless they like you know throw it on the ground and jump up and down on it or it has a bunch of other heavy stuff on top of it and it's bending the the changing the shape of it or or messing up the cover or if it accidentally gets torn I mean they're mostly books you know they're, they're gonna be fine they're not really it's harder to mess up a book 
even if you just drop it, I mean, unless it falls right on the spine, you get a dent, um, you know, that kind of thing. But CDs, I mean, I drop cases too many times and break the case. <laughs> Can't really break the CD, but I mean, by dropping it, but, um, but yeah. But also books are cheap, you know, if you buy them in bulk or if you go to the thrift store, they're they're cheap and they're abundant. But that's also why I like to source CDs at thrift stores and book sales is because most people don't, most resellers, Amazon resellers don't even mess with them because they're either gated or, well, they're just gated, I guess. But, um, you know, you can become like the one person at a book sale or at a thrift store who actually goes through the CDs and finds some valuable stuff even though maybe the books have already been gone through or the books don't have as much um, value. So yeah. Oops. So if you're, uh, how many of you guys actually have a storage unit or something other than your house to keep your stuff in? Because, you know, for me, I was just doing FBA and then um, when I got into bulk, I had to find a storage unit in order to deal with <laughs> the quantity of, uh, of books. First of all, it was books, and then it was CDs, and then it was DVDs. Then I even found vinyl. It's probably worth it to get a, a Gaylord of vinyl, if the price is right. Because, assuming that the CD, the, the records aren't that messed up, you know, aren't all bent up and broken and all that stuff. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of money in there. It's going to take more time, but when I sent in a bunch of vinyl to Amazon, I was I was doing pretty well with. It, it bumped up my average sale price, um, definitely. It's just that it takes more time. You gotta you gotta pull it out, pull out the vinyl, take a look at it. Um, you have to have a record player to test it. I bought a record player for over 200 bucks. Works great. Um, hook up the speakers and pretty. Uh, pretty easy I mean if you see any scratches or what look like scratches or something that you can feel with your fingernail then um, you can probably or you, you're definitely gonna want to test it but uh, overall a lot of the vinyl is like a lot of the CD surfaces are pretty good and you don't have to deal with um, testing it I don't I never got a, a vinyl uh, cleaner I, I don't know if it's a resurfacer I don't know if it's just a cleaner or whatever but those kind of machines that they have. Oh. Well, this one, oh, that's, oh, never mind. Uh, you have a five by 10, 75 a month, a five by 10. That's pretty small. Do you, um, is that where you keep eBay stuff, or do you, uh, what do you call it? Do you, um, you know, when you buy a bunch of stuff, you put it there to kind of sort it, or just keep it until you want to sort it? I have all my eBay stuff uh, in my garage for sale. Uh, for now, because I can just go right there and just, uh, I don't have to come to the, to the, storage unit did you guys yeah eBay stuff yeah and if and when I actually list I'm, I've got eight boxes those one two three four five six seven those eight boxes some of them are pretty big are individual items for that I have already priced for eBay um, 
so yeah, <laughs> I've got a lot. I mean, that's probably, that's hundreds of items. I don't know how many. I don't, there's definitely not a hundred in each. A couple of them have CDs though. They're packed with CDs. So it's probably 500 or I don't know more would be my guess. Anyway, so uh, if, if and when I get to slowly listing all those, I bought some bookshelves from my garage, but um, you never know. I, I do like, prefer that, prefer having the eBay stuff there because I have all my envelopes and packing materials and boxes and everything. I kind of feel like if, if I get to the point of having so much eBay stuff that I'm going to probably want, well... I was going to say a, a small warehouse space, but I'd have to be uh, making a lot more money and that sort of thing. So this is turning out to be me just going through these empty CD cases before I even get to sorting out um, all those CDs, well not all of them, but starting to sort out CDs for the lots. But today my goal is to take some pictures of at least some so that I can list, start listing them on eBay. I was just so relieved to get out that last, uh, that last shipment so that I could focus on, on this remaining stuff. It just gets to my it gets to me when it sits around and, and I'm not listing it, I'm not uh, making money off of it or putting myself in a position to make money off of it. Uh, it's just kind of a headache. So I feel like I want to get to a place to where I've gotten th gone through all the CDs, all the DVDs, and uh, so that if I'm going to keep doing bulk, I kind of at a level, you know, clean slate kind of a deal <clears throat> so that I'm not having all this other stuff. Oh, I have all this other stuff to do before I go through these three Gaylords and just create more stuff that I have to sell off. I mean, I can always, you know, do the clutter, but I decided to not do that, not to support them because they're just um, drop their prices to the very bottom. Um, but it was convenient for a while. So if you guys have any questions, and the topic of this was about, um, which if you came in later you probably didn't hear about, was about why CDs still sell. You can go back and watch the beginning. The first about 10 minutes is when I talk about that. So when I do live videos, I'm gonna, if it has like a proper theme, which I'm gonna try to have, uh, I'll get to that immediately. So it's not 30, 40, 50 minutes in that I start talking about the topic of the, of the video. And so for those that just want to know about that and not see me chatting with people and, and going through CDs, they can get right to it in the beginning. Um, but uh, definitely for resellers, CDs are going to keep on going strong. And apparently for new CDs, they're going to keep selling, but it's just more becoming evolving and becoming more of a niche thing. Although a billion dollars in sales is not that niche, but still. Apparently the peak of CD sales in this country, here's Britney Spears, was, uh, was it was like 99 or 2000? I saw the, I can't remember the year, it's, it's in one of those articles. Um, oh, that's right, it was $15 billion of new CDs were sold in either 2000 or maybe it was 2010, I can't remember exactly which year it was, but it was over 10 years ago. Uh, and now it's down to a billion. So when you look at those numbers, it's crazy how digital downloads and streaming and vinyl have disrupted the CD, uh, physical CD sales. Do you list in your storage unit? No, I do not have, I do not list here. Will I do that in the future? 
maybe, <laughs> but I don't have a hot spot situation, so I'd have to set that up. Do you do that? And how much does that cost? Um, I mean, if I were to, it would probably, I like the idea of taking, potentially taking photos. Well, I've done it before, not potentially. Photos for eBay here. But then I want to um, weigh the stuff out and uh, I like to leave it at home so that when it sells, I have it there, I can just pack it up. Yeah, I've never listed on the phone, on my phone. I only list them through my laptop for um, Amazon and eBay. I, I hear, I don't know about a lot, but I've heard a good amount of people on um, some videos, YouTube videos, but also on the uh, Facebook groups who talk about listing on their phone. And even with eBay, it's weird because then you have to like, you have to list, uh, Ugh. You have to fill out the description. The title's not a big deal, but if you're going to write anything in the description, and what I like to do, I mean, if it's a lot, no, I like to have templates. And I don't know, maybe you can do the templates through the through the um, mobile phone, but still, I, I I don't like you know using my thumbs, and I'd rather type. I don't know if that just means that I'm old, old school, but. Kind of like how so many people like to do everything with their phone, like it's a computer. And to me, a phone is a phone. I mean, I know I can go on the, online and stream and use apps and all that, but check my email. But uh, computer work is for a computer as far as I'm concerned. It's way easier, bigger screen. I have a keyboard, proper keyboard. To me, it just makes more sense. Yeah, let's see on the phone. So I think that's it for today, guys. It's been a fun video talking about this stuff. Um, I also have a lot of books back here that I kept because I didn't want to get rid of them. And I feel that I could probably sell. There's a lot of kids books. There's a lot of uh, fiction, adult fiction, hardback and soft cover. I'll probably do eBay lots for those. It's not too much. I also have like these these old ones here I have a bunch of them different colors and those seem to do well on eBay people want that stuff as decoration put on their shelves so um, that's another thing <laughs> I have a bunch of Twilight ones I sold up the whole series of Twilight books for like 13 bucks but um, anyway I think that's it guys Tune in tomorrow. I'm not sure what the video will be about. I'll probably make another video. I'll probably be here. We'll see. Um, keep on uh, keep on working hard on Thursday. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, guys, please subscribe. If you have not subscribed yet, if you're watching this live, or if you're watching this in the future when the video is posted up on YouTube, please subscribe. Uh, that'll really help.